Hi, welcome to Scattered Terrain. My name is Meredith, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my little canvas sacks. For this project, you're going to need a handful of rocks, some embroidery thread or a thin piece off of some yarn, a pair of scissors, a bottle of PVA glue, some paint and a paintbrush, a paper towel, and your wash. Our first step is going to be to cut down our paper towel into smaller squares. The size square you need depends entirely on how big a bag you're making. And then you're going to cut a few lengths of string. Now you want to make sure that you're cutting this string long enough that you can get a hold of both ends to be able to tie it in a knot. And cut one string for every bag you want to make. Next, we're going to pick our rocks. We're looking for rocks that don't have any really sharp edges, and ideally ones with a flat bottom. But you're also just looking for any rocks that have an interesting shape. Once you've decided which stones you're using, grab one of your squares of paper towel and lay your rocks in the center of it. Then you're going to take a piece of string, and you're going to make a big loop in it. But don't pull it tight. And then set this aside. Then you're going to grab the corners of your paper towel and pull them up to the center. Then just pinch the top and give it a twist to make a nice little bag. You're going to want to take a second to play with how the folds are laying because you don't want any of them to be too big. And then just slip that loop over the top and pull it tight. And then you're going to want to go ahead and give it a second loop here to lock your knot in place. Then cut your strings down to a more in-scale length. And then you're also going to want to cut down the top of the bag. I've found the best way to do this is to cut one straight line about a quarter of an inch up from your knot. And then holding the bag at an angle, spin it around while trimming the edges. Then set this guy to the side and pick your next rock. So you just take your chosen rock, put it in the center of your paper towel, gather up all the edges, give it a good twist, drop your loop over the top, and pull it tight. Then trim up your edges, and it's on to the next bag. For this final bag, I'm going to go ahead and make a large one using several rocks stacked together to give you a strange and unique shape inside the bag. Really make your players wonder at what's inside there. Well, and it looks like for this, I'm actually going to need a slightly larger piece of paper towel. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. Rocks in the center, gather and twist, tie and trim. Now, credit where credit is due, I got the idea for these canvas sacks from Mel the Terrain Tutor. One of his Let's Make videos from a few years back was on pallets, bags, and boxes. And the way that he made his little bin bags is almost identical to what I'm doing here with paper towel. I'll throw a link to his original video down in the description below. Once you're done tying up all your little bags, we're ready for the next step. And our next step is to soak these little guys in a mixture of half white glue, half water. So we're going to set them up on our plastic tray. Now if the top of your bags are looking a little stiff to you, you can loosen it up by just playing with it with your fingers a bit to kind of pull it open a little and spread out the folds. And then you're going to grab your 50-50 PVA and water and just give them a good soaking. Now when you first pour the mixture on top, it's going to seem to not soak into the paper towel. You just have to give it a minute. When you come back and hit it a second time, it's going to soak right in. And you just want to make sure you have a good coating on all sides. And just check and make sure you don't have any dry spots. Now you want to take a quick look at how your strings wound up. And just give them a nice pat down, straighten them out if they look a little funky. You do want to be careful that you don't leave them sitting in a puddle of PVA, because then when they dry, they'll have this disc attached to their bases and then you just set these aside to dry. Once they're completely dry, they'll be good and hard, and we can move on to painting. So I'm gonna grab my fancy palette and put a good amount of paint on it. Then I'm gonna grab my damp brush and give all of my bags a good solid coating in my base color. I find it works best to paint my bags using a production line style of painting all of the tops and sides of my bags and then circling back to the beginning of the line and going through and painting the underside. That way I'm not having to hold on to a wet bag's sides while I'm painting the bottom. Once all of your bags are completely coated in your base color, 
set them aside to dry. Once they're completely dry, we're gonna go ahead and do a dip wash with these guys. I keep my wash in a large mouth jar so that it's big enough for me to be able to get a good sized piece all the way inside it. So I'm gonna take another piece of my string and make a loop with my finger. Then I'm just gonna loop it around the neck of one of my bags and slowly and carefully lower it into my wash. Just one quick all the way down and all the way back up. Let it drip off for a second. Tap it down to my paper towel and then set it aside. I can pull my string back off and repeat the process with the next bag. Now that tapping it on the paper towel helps to get rid of a lot of the extra wash that's dripping off of the bottom. That way you don't accidentally glue it to whatever surface you're drying it on. And once you've dipped the last of your bags, you're gonna go ahead and set them aside to dry. Once those have dried again, we'll move on to our next step, dry brushing. So you're gonna grab your palette and your nice beat up dry brush. And then we're gonna grab that same original base color again. Give it a good shake and put it on our palette. You're just gonna work that paint into the dry bristles of your brush and get almost all of it off onto your paper towel and then dry brush your bags. Now I like to start my dry brushing on the bottom just in case I have more paint on my brush than I realized. You're gonna give a good coating to the top of the bag and then from top to bottom, just work your way down all of the sides. And just repeat this process on all of the sacks you're making. All right, and then once we've completed the dry brushing, you're gonna wanna swap out for a detail brush. Now this particular brush I'm using is for miniature painting, but any tiny brush will work just fine. You're just looking for something with a small enough tip to give you some control. So you're gonna wanna grab a second color of paint. I'm using a very pale tan. You wanna wet down your brush and then very gently paint that rope you tied the bag with. And just make sure you get a nice fine line all the way around the neck of your bag and that you pick out those two strings on the front. Now personally my hands shake pretty bad so what I'm doing here you'll see is I'm resting the back of my hand on the table and then I'm using my pinky on my right hand to lock down with my fingers on my left hand against the side of the bag and then I'm resting the rest of my hand onto my pinky and then I'm using a dragging motion to pull the brush in the direction that I want to paint. This is the best way I've found to be able to paint fine detail work without having my shake be much of an issue. And once you've painted the last of your strings, you are done. Though personally, once they're completely dry, I do take them outside for a quick spray coat of a good matte varnish. And so here they are, all done and looking beautiful. There is no end to the amount of variety of shapes you can get with this, depending on the rocks that you put inside, so go ahead and have some fun with it. Now that I've shown you how I make my canvas sacks, let's go see how they look on the table. With the aid of the guards, you manage to get all of the remaining inhabitants of the castle down into the cellar. As they scramble to find places to hide amongst the stacked supplies, you hear the clatter of bony feet on the stairs. You have but a matter of moments to prepare yourselves before the first skeleton enters the room. Roll for initiative. All right, and so there you have it. That is the basic canvas sack, suitable for storing all of your dungeon needs. Once again, a huge thank you to Mel the Terrain Tutor for pioneering the idea with his plastic bin bags. If you liked what you saw here, tune in for my next video. I'm gonna take this a step further and make training dummies. Stick around. Thanks for spending some of your time here with me at Scattered Terrain. If you liked that video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.